Thank you very much, Mr. Preston, and good afternoon to everyone. <laughs> Brethren, the Feast of Trumpets is only two days away. Can you believe that? The fall holy days are rapidly approaching. And I'm sure if you're like me, you're getting excited about it all, looking forward to it and preparing. But as exciting as the approaching days are, there are other things that happen around this time of the year as well, though less exciting for sure. As summer morphs into autumn and the days get shorter and the nights longer and temperatures cool down, the leaves start falling, there's a lot of opportunities to rake leaves if you have many trees around your property. I did a lot of raking when I was a youngster. And also at this time of year, something else takes place that most of us may not think too much about unless we're an employee at a business or other organization. Yes, this is also time for annual benefits enrollment. For instance, where I work, they're already sending me information about the benefits that we can sign up for for 2023. And I'm also keenly aware of benefit plans and enrollment because our youngest daughter, Heather, got an internship with a company that prepares benefits packages and binders. And so she's been very busy with graphic design work um, and preparing, this is their busy season, preparing all those packages. It's many different types of organizations, businesses, governments, uh, fraternal societies, uh, fraternal organizations, social clubs offer their members benefits. And to borrow an old American Express slogan, membership has its privileges. Well, membership in God's church and being part of God's family has its benefits or privileges as well. And just as many companies or other organizations offer benefits to their members, their customers, to their recipients, so does God. Yes, he has a benefits plan. And today I'd like us to think about the benefits plan that God is offering to you and me. But first, it's important to understand why. Why should we know about the benefits that God is offering us? We need to know about those benefits to stay motivated. Climatic and traumatic Events are about to unfold in this world before Jesus' second coming. And we need to stay committed, stay alert. We need to hang on. We need to endure to the end. We need to stay motivated in order to accomplish Jesus' command to persevere and to remain faithful to the very end of our lives. You know, even Jesus needed to stay focused on the ultimate goal, the reward. Let's look at that briefly over in Hebrews 12 and verses 1 through 2. That's Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 through 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us or ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So if Jesus needed to focus in on the ultimate goal or reward, most certainly we do as well. Therefore, we need to remind ourselves and review the benefits God is offering us from time to time, lest we forget and get discouraged. So let's keep our benefits binder and guide open, the Bible, as we learn more about what God is offering each of us. Please turn with me to Psalm 103, and let's start out there. We'll be coming back to Psalm 103 quite a bit, so you might want to mark the place in your Bible. Psalm 103 and verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, 
who forgives all your iniquities. Okay, let's stop there for just a few minutes. Benefit number one. So the first benefit for us to consider is in God's plan is the one that you might call God's mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness program, also known as the conversion salvation process, which was mentioned in today's opening prayer and the announcements. We need God's conversion salvation process. We need God's mercy. We can learn more about this benefit in this same psalm. So let's go to verse 8, Psalm 103, and start in verse 8. Let me get over there. And read verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and is gone. And his place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Brethren, mankind in general, and all of us in particular, were burdened down with various sins, faults, guilt, shame, with various mental hang-ups and problems before our conversion. But God, in his mercy, has a plan, a plan to help us. And this is one of God's great benefits. He has a plan to free us from sin and shame and guilt. He offers to wipe away our sins. They're just like debts. And he offers to wipe it away. The Bible also pictures sin as a type of slavery. But God, in his mercy, grants us freedom. Let's read about that over in Romans chapter 6, getting with verse 16. That's Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the ones slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your slave, your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having been become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that touches on a few other benefits that we'll get to in just a few minutes. But for now, just notice that God, through God's mercy, after repentance, God forgives us and sets us free from sin and the penalty of death. And just as Jesus said over in John, John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Then after baptism, picturing the killing, the death of the burial of the old self, and through the laying on of hands and the receiving of God's Holy Spirit, we are given additional help in achieving mental, emotional, and spiritual health. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. 
And 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17 tells us, For God has not given us, He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And as an additional perk of God's mental, emotional, spiritual wellness program, God also gives us free consultations, not with just any rookie mental health professional, but with God the Father himself. We have a direct line to God the Father, available 24-7. But though it's free to us, we know it really wasn't free. It cost the precious blood of Jesus Christ through his sacrifice. So let's gratefully make use of this precious gift of prayer, which is another part of this benefit. Okay, let's move on and look at another great benefit of God. Benefit number two. Let's go back to Psalm 103 again. Psalm 103 lists some of the major benefits that God offers us. In Psalm 103 in verse 3, that's Psalm 103 in verse 3, we're told this about God, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So another big benefit is God's guaranteed health plan. That's right. God offers us health assurance, not health insurance, but health assurance. The second benefit is the assurance by God that ultimately we will have perfect health. Now God's word, of course, gives us many principles of good health that we can apply in our current lifetimes. And he also tells us what to do when we get sick, as we're instructed in James 5.14. God promises to heal us. We can count on that, but he never says exactly when. That's The timing is left up to him. He will determine when healing is best for us. But one thing is for sure, if we're not healed in this lifetime, we will be healed at the resurrection. You know, most companies offer a health plan but usually it's not completely free. Most plans require that you pay into it, and yes, the employer often will pay some too, which is generous of them. Granted, uh, that's generous, and yet, when you go to the doctor, you have to often pay up to the deductible before the plan kicks in, or you have to pay a co-payment. Either way, it's not entirely free, is it? and your medical care you get is uncertain at best. But under God's plan, you won't have to pay any medical bills. There won't be any medical bills because you have ultimately perfect health. And we're told that, let's read about that over in 1 Corinthians 15, and we'll read verses 42 to 44. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 42 to 44. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. No more physical pain. Won't that be wonderful? No more devastating sickness and disease. No more debilitating injuries. And ultimately, as we're told over in Revelation 21.4, there will be no more death, sorrow, no more pain for anyone because the former things have passed away and God has made all things new. So the second be benefit is health assurance. Let's go on and look at a third benefit in God's plan. The third benefit is life assurance. That's right, not life insurance, but life assurance. If you and, have, you and I have life insurance, if you die, typically your relatives will get a death benefit. They might get a lump sum or an annuity to help pay for a missing stream of income that you, if you were the breadwinner, would have provided if you were still living. Well, that helps your relatives, but it doesn't do much for you, does it? The insured. You're dead and gone. But under God's benefits plan, things are much different. Referring back again to Psalm 103, 
This time, verse 4, that's Psalm 103 and verse 4, in reference to God again, we read, who redeems your life from destruction. Yes, God redeems. He buys back our lives from destruction, from death. He protects us from many disasters in this life, but especially and more importantly, he spares us from the second death by granting us eternal life. And that's a huge benefit. Let's see that over in John 3, verses 14 through 16. That's John 3, and verses 14 through 16. And as Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In 1 John 5, 13, that's 1 John 5 and verse 13. These things I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Eternal life is a free gift for those who trust and believe in Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's not something we earn. Matter of fact, we do not want to accept what we can earn from the, our sinful works, from the works of the flesh, do we? For as we were just read recently, earlier, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. So we should accept God's gift of eternal life and not want to get our wages. When I was in college many years ago in one of our business or economics classes, we must have been having a discussion on jobs, how to get, get jobs, keep jobs. And one of my classmates raised their hand with a question. And as best as I can remember it, it he, was, he said he had worked at a factory during the summer for a summer job. And he was using a very expensive piece of equipment at the factory. And he did something wrong, and he totally ruined, demolished the machine. But he didn't get fired, and he wanted to know, why, why didn't they fire me? And so the professor was, thought about it for a while and said, well, maybe, maybe they realized you had a good attitude, you were learning from your mistake, they, they were hoping you'll stay with the firm, the company, and, uh, and eventually become a profitable employee. Well, I thought that question and answer was, was interesting. But you know, the same thing applies to all of us. On our own, we mess things up, don't we? Left to our own devices. We should never want to receive the wages that we deserve based on the works of the flesh, which is death. We do want to do good works, but having Christ living in us doing those works. Maybe God sees our potential someday in the kingdom, but more likely it's just God is very merciful, and he grants us eternal life, even though we don't deserve it. But at a minimum, it does help us to be very thankful, very appreciative, and very loyal to him. Okay, let's move on to another great benefit in God's plan. Benefit number four, a guaranteed job you will love. You now, many people believe in the concept of quote unquote Christian retirement, which has been popularized in various cartoons and legends over the years. It's popular to believe that when you die, you go up to heaven and just floating on a cloud in heaven, maybe occasionally strum your golden harp, a few tunes on your harp, maybe play a game of checkers with one of the angels. How different that is from the benefit described in God's plan. Please turn me with me once again to Psalm 103, and let's look at the second part of verse 4. That's Psalm 103 in the second part of verse 4, which says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Yes, we are to be crowned, but what exactly does that mean or symbolize? What will it look like? 
This past, this last week on Monday was the queen's funeral. Upon her death, Charles, her son, became the king of the United Kingdom. And he's to be officially coronated sometime in the future. It may be months from now. When a monarch is crowned, they take on rulership, responsibility, a position, authority, power. That's hard for us to imagine now. In a very literal sense, a similar, similar benefit will be bestowed on each of us as Jesus intends for us to reign with him in his kingdom. In John 14, in verses 2 through 3, as John 14, 2 through 3, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. The church has understood this to mean rooms or positions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us in his government. We're told in the book of Revelation that we'll be kings and priests and reigning with him on this earth. For additional proof, let's read Daniel 7 and verse 27. That's Daniel chapter 7. In verse 27, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. In Matthew 25, verse 21. It's Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And Revelation. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21. Revelation 3 and verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. But there's also another aspect to having a crown that we should consider. Yes, a crown can re represent authority, but it also can signify or confirm that someone has been tested, that their qualifications for a position have been met and checked, and they are being honored or recognized for meeting those qualifications. A crown is given to those who qualify for it, who meet all the conditions or qualifications. Charles, the new king of England, king of the United Kingdom, had to meet the qualifications to become king we need to meet the qualifications too, which includes our heartfelt devotion to Jesus Christ and our being like him in integrity and character. And we need our to use our rulership in the right way. Now this is explained, I think, very well over in Romans 2. So let's look at that briefly over in Romans chapter 2. Romans 2, beginning with verse 6. In Romans 2, 6, Paul is saying that God will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. So as future kings and priests of God, we need to seek glory, honor, and immortality, but not for our own benefit, not for our own glory and honor, but for God's. And not to get fame and fortune for ourselves, 
but out of the desire to continually do what's right and good and in order to promote truth and love and righteousness. Maybe that's what Paul was also thinking about near the end of his life when in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, that's 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8, he wrote, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. So circling back to Psalm 103, when David said, one of the benefits from the Lord is to be crowned by him with loving kindness and tender mercies. It may mean not only that God blesses us with loving kindness and tender mercies, but also that he fashions us in such a way that hopefully we will be like him, having those same qualities ourselves. So we will be able to rule with Jesus with loving kindness and mercy. One additional thought here is that serving with Jesus will not be monotonous, boring work. Not at all, just the opposite. Working and under Jesus, we will be happy, busy, active. We'll be helping others, serving God, learning new things, solving problems, helping the needy, restoring justice, eradicating poverty, ending sickness, countering ignorance, stopping war, resolving conflicts, reuniting families. Exciting work lies ahead for all of us. Okay, let's move on to benefit number five, family support, all our needs taken care of. That's right, God promises to provide for us and give everything we need so that we can grow and thrive. Once again, let's look at Psalm 103, and this time read verse five. That's Psalm 103 and verse five. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Under God's plan, we are provided with everything we need to flourish as Christians. Now, we may not always have what we want because what we want isn't always what's good for us, but God promises to supply our every need. Matthew chapter 6, and verses 31 to 33, that's Matthew 6. 31 to 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. But your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek, the first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So God will provide our food and clothing if we have the right priorities. But he also will supply our other needs. Philippians 4 and verse 19 tells us that. Philippians 4 and verse 19. <laughs> and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, Peter, Peter once asked about God's benefits plan. That's recorded for us over in Mark 10. So let's go there next. That's Mark chapter 10 and verses 28 to 31. Mark 10 and verses 28 to 31. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. And Matthew's account adds, Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. As many have had to leave family or friends in order to become part of the church. 
in order to go God's way. But they have received a hundred times more family and friends, all of you, all the people in the church, both in quantity and in quality than they had previously. Okay, let's move on to benefit number six. Benefit number six, free legal services. Again, it's not, it's not really free. Yes, God had to pay a big price for this, for all these benefits. But God promises and offers us a legal defense and assurance, or assistance rather, legal defense and assistance benefit in his plan. Psalm 103 and verse 6. That's Psalm 103 and verse 6. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. This God is looking out for us every possible way, and he will right any wrongs and free us from oppression. It's very painful and sad when we see all the horrible things happening in, in the world, but it must be especially discouraging for people who don't believe in God. They may feel criminals have gotten away with it. But that's not so. God will bring about justice. The wicked will not get away with anything. We must not let injustices, injustices in this life discourage us. Galatians 6 and verse 9. That's Galatians chapter 6. And verse 9 tells us, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And as we read previously in Romans, God will render to each one according to his deeds. There will be justice in the end. And finally, we get to benefit number seven. I've saved the best for last. I'm sure there are many more benefits in God's plan, but together we've covered some of the major ones today. Benefit number seven is getting to truly know God and being part of his family. This means developing close, loving relationship, having a close, loving relationship with God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, and all of his family, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And it begins by us learning more about God. But he helps us by revealing himself to us, if we're paying attention. Psalm 103 and verse 7, that's Psalm 103 and verse 7, shows that God reveals himself to his people. Psalm 103 and verse 7 tells us, he made known his ways to Moses his acts to the children of Israel. Yes, God has made himself known to his people. And what a blessing is that. You know, the most, one of those, probably the most frightening words you could ever hear is, I never knew you, depart from me. You practice lawlessness. We don't ever want that to be told, spoken to us. So we should do all we can to draw close to God. He promises if we do that with a true heart that he will draw close to us. So we should strive to have a close and loving relationship with God. I like how Jesus summed it all up. I think you want a wonderful summary here in John chapter 17 and the third verse. It's in the Jesus' prayer to the Father. And in John Chapter 17, and the for third verse, he said, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In other words, the most critical and important thing in life is getting to know God the Father and Jesus Christ, and allowing them to know us as well. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 17 through 18, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 17 through 18, we read, 
Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. As we've been called to be part of God's family, as we learn from a number of scriptures, including John 1, verse 12. This is John, the first chapter of John, and verse what? Or verse 12. John 1, 12, which tells us, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. And also Romans 8, Romans 8 and verse 16, which tells us the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. God desires a close, loving relationship with each of us. Can you imagine what it'll be like with God the Father and Jesus Christ for all eternity, with all our brothers and sisters? That's far better than having a good boss and good coworkers, isn't it? It's a lot better than having a, a great teacher and good classmates, isn't it? What a blessing and benefit to work with God the Father and Jesus Christ and be around with converted people. What a blessing who love God and serve God. God told Abraham, I am your reward. So in the ultimate sense, God the Father and Jesus are our reward. So this last benefit is getting to know God and having the opportunity to develop a loving and close relationship with him and his family that will last for all eternity. God has a wonderful benefits plan, doesn't he? It's the best plan there is. There's no other plan on earth comparable to it. Psalm 68 and 19 says, that's Psalm 68, 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. How would you like a an account where you daily get loaded with more money. Well, God daily loads us with benefits. Who daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, Sila, which means meditate on this. A number of God's benefits are available to us in this lifetime. The Bible tells us that God deals with us as children, his children, and that all things work together for good. God protects us. He delivers us from danger. He provides for our physical needs. He helps us to be successful in life. He gives us strength and peace and stability. Though he allows us to go through trials at times, he's always looking out for our best interest. And he won't allow anything to happen to us that would permanently harm us. Other benefits, so some benefits are in this lifetime, but other benefits come at the resurrection and thereafter. Matthew 16 and verse 27. Matthew 16 and verse 27. Matthew 16, 27 tells us, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Also, Isaiah 40, verse 10. I like, I like all these scriptures, but this is a good one too. Isaiah 40 and verse 10 tells us, Isaiah 40 and verse 10, Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. It's Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. The scriptures tell us that we need to be zealous for good works. God will not forget our labor of love. Even the smallest act of kindness, giving a cup of cold water to someone, will be remembered, we are told, and rewarded. 
But there are many benefits yet to come that we don't even know about. Not yet. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. Mr. Walker likes to refer to this one, and it is a, it's a wonderful scripture. It, it's a favorite of many of us. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10 tells us, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So no doubt, additional benefits will be revealed to us through God's Spirit in the future. In Psalm 16, 11, that's Psalm chapter 16, 11, tells us, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Brethren, as you can see from what we covered today, God has a great benefits plan. Under his benefits plan, we can have forgiveness of sins and peace of mind. We can have excellent health. Given, we're given eternal life, an exciting job to look forward to in the future under Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Under his plan, God will supply our ever, every need. He will bring about true justice. We will get to know God the Father and Jesus Christ on a personal basis as part of, and be part of their loving family for all eternity. What a wonderful benefits plan God has for each of us. Troubling times lie ahead, but we need to stay focused. We need to endure to the end. We need to stay close to God and do as David instructs us in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <laughs>